Hey, boys and girls, happy Tuesday. I hope that you're doing well. I've got three fun books I'm going to read for you this morning. The first one is brand new. We just got it. And it's called If You Come to Earth by Sophie Blackall. She wrote the story and she did the illustrations. And she's won two Caldecott awards before, which are awards they give for very good illustrations. This is such a beautiful book. It's kind of hard to see by camera here, but I want you to check it out. The illustrations are beautiful and the story is wonderful. So we'll start with this. And again, this was published in just this year in 2020 by Clarion, excuse me, Chronicle Books, Chronicle Books. So here it is, If You Come to Earth. And in this story, this boy named Quinn is writing a letter to a visitor from outer space. If someone ever came to earth from outer space. So the book starts, Dear Visitor from Outer Space. If you come to Earth, here's what you will need to know. You can find us near a big sun and a tiny moon and a bunch of other planets. Ours is the greeny blue one. So there's Earth in our solar system. So here's the sun. The planet closest to the sun is Mercury. Then next we have Venus. And of course, there's Earth with our moon. And then the red planet, do you know what that is? Mars, right. And the biggest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. The, the planet with the rings, Saturn, right? And then this one, it can be pronounced two ways, Uranus or Uranus, and then Neptune. And then this book includes Pluto. There's some debate on if Pluto's a planet or not, but this book included Pluto. So that's our solar system. The green and brown bits are land and the blue stuff is water. People mostly live on the land in big cities or small towns or tiny villages or just in the middle of nowhere. Oh my, look, this big area. There's one tiny house there. So that house is in the middle of nowhere. We live in all kinds of homes. That's why this would be good to look at up closely. But castles are homes, a camper, a lighthouse, many tree house, many different kinds of homes on earth. In all kinds of families. There are more than 7 billion people on earth. 7 billion. We all have bodies but every body is different. Except for my friends who are identical twins and look the same, except for Mustafa's mole. So Quinn is saying everyone looks different except identical twins. And he's right. Inside our heads, we are usually thinking. You can't see our thoughts, 
but sometimes we show our feelings on our faces. Look, how do you think she feels? Look, angry, maybe? <gasps> Surprised? Happy, laughing, smiling? So we show feelings on our faces. Even if we don't feel like it, we get dressed every day. We wear different clothes depending on what we do and where we live and if it's hot or cold. So look, oh, there's a bride. She must be getting married. Where would this person be living? Working on the moon, an astronaut. Oh, other people wearing clothes. There's a lot of different weather in the world. Look, we can see wind and rain, heavy rain, hail, snow, fog, lightning. Oh, and even floods. Look, can you see? Oh, even floods. Some of the weather is good and some of it is bad. Floods, definitely bad. Wherever people live, we usually have to go somewhere else. There are lots of ways to get there. Oh, my tractors, cars, airplanes, buses, many different kinds of transportation. I'm a kid. Quinn says, and kids go to school to learn stuff. So we'll know what to do when we're grown up. It's like all the kids in school. Grown ups do lots of things to make the world work. And all oh, we can see doctors, mechanics, maybe a teacher, maybe a Navy captain, someone growing food, all different kinds of things to make the world work. But when people are not at work or at school or sick or asleep, we all get to do whatever we want. Whatever we are doing, we need to eat when we are hungry. Some of us have more food than others. We all need food and water to survive. But there's Quinn with a pitcher of water. We get water from the rain, which flows like little streams into little streams and big rivers all the way to the sea. You can't drink the sea because it's salty. The sea looks empty, looks empty, but actually it's full. Fish can swim, but they can't walk. Oh my, whales, dolphins, all different kinds of sea creatures, turtles, sea snakes. Oh, they can swim, but they can't walk. Most animals can walk or swim or gallop or hop, but they can't fly. Except there's a little bat and the bat says, I can fly. Some birds can swim and walk and fly, but there's a penguin saying, I can't fly. Penguins can't fly, can they? So if I had a chance, Quinn said, I'd be a bird because birds can walk and swim and fly. Birds can sing, so can whales. And humans, people make all kinds of music on our own or all together. Some 
of us who are deaf, do you know what deaf means? When people are deaf, their ears don't work, they can't hear. And Quinn says, some of us who are deaf talk with our hands and faces. So you can talk, there's the alphabet A, B, C, D. You can learn to talk with your hands. Some of us who are blind, that means we can't see, can read with our fingers. The braille alphabet are raised dots and thumbs and each letter has a different arrangement of dots and they, people feel the dots and they can make out the letters and spell the words. If we are blind, we can imagine colors and as shapes and sounds. These are all the colors you need to paint everything in the world. Some things are part of nature. Let's see, mushrooms, acorns, flowers, seashells. But some other things are made by people. A wheelbarrow, scissors, a clock, glasses, those are made by people. Some things are big. Oh, a big ship, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, oh, the skeleton of a dinosaur. And Quinn says, but other things are little, like little peanuts, pins, a little clover, just a thimble, a tack, small things. Some things are invisible. And then in very soft words, it says that gravity, electricity, the smell of roast chicken, old socks, wet wool, germs. Some germs can make you sick. So eating a woolly milk cap toadstool or breathing in smoke or getting spat on by a slow loris. Sometimes people get hurt by accident. Oh, this man fell off a ladder. This girl dropped something on her foot. This boy slipped, so we can have accidents too. Sometimes we hurt each other. Look, there are the twins wrestling and they both, mom, mom. And all oh, the soldiers are having a battle. We hurt each other. It's better when we help each other. And I love this because look, this is a library. They're helping in a library. So it's better when we help. Babies are not very good at anything. Kids are good at lots of things. Grown-ups can do just about anything until they are really, really old. But by then, the babies are grown up and can help. Older people are good at telling stories about the world when they were young. Kids are good at making up stories that haven't happened yet. There are lots of things we don't know. We don't know where we were before we were born or where we go when we die. But right this minute, we are here together on this beautiful planet. If you come to Earth, space visitor, you can stay in my room. Love, Quinn. So he finished his letter, but he adds a couple of things. Whoops, I went too far. 
excuse me. He says, P.S. That means just a couple more things. How many eyes do you have? Are you small or big? Do you have any pets? When is your birthday? Is it always dark where you are? Are you going to visit us? My friends and I want to know. So that's the end of his letter. Again, this is such a beautiful book, friends. It's so much better to look at up close with all of the detail. But I thought it would be a nice story to share today. Okay. My second book is a little funnier. It's called, called Those Darn Squirrels by Adam Rubin. And the pictures by Daniel Salmeri. And this was published in 2008 by Clarion Books. Those darn squirrels. On the outskirts of town, there was a little old house. The only thing older than the little house was the man who lived in it. Old Man Fookwire. Old Man Fookwire was so old that when he sneezed, dust came out. He was also a grump. He hated pie. He hated puppies. The only thing he liked were birds. All summer long, the old man painted pictures of the birds that visited his backyard. There were whirly birds and bonga birds, baba birds and yabba birds. Even a rare flugel bird came by once or twice. Fuquire's paintings weren't very good, but the birds never said anything. When the air turned crisp and the leaves began to change color, the old man grew sad. He knew that soon the birds would fly south for the winter as they did every year, and that would make him lonely. But then he had an idea. If he fed the birds, maybe they would stick around. So old man Fuquire built beautiful bird feeders and put them up all around his backyard. He filled the feeders with delicious seeds and berries and soon birds came from all over the forest just to eat in the old man's yard. But the birds weren't the only ones who liked the bird feeders, the squirrels did too. Now, not many people know this, but squirrels are the cleverest of all woodland creatures. In fact, they're fuzzy little geniuses. They can make a house out of a tree, a bed out of a bunch of leaves, and a box kite out of twigs, dirt, and squirrel spit. They are also excellent at math. And this is an old ancient little thing that helps count called an abacus. And look, they have squirrels using an abacus. Winter was fast approaching and the squirrels needed to gather as much food as they could to get ready. So they decided to take some of the bird food. The birds were not happy, neither was old man Fuquire. When he discovered what had happened, he shook his old man fist and yelled, those darn squirrels. Look at him shake his fist, those darn squirrels. He filled up the feeders again, but this time he hung them from a clothesline. Then he went back inside confident that the squirrels would no longer be able to get the seeds and berries. Look, he had to climb a high ladder. 
but the squirrels were determined. They devised a plan. It means they thought up a plan. And this time they took all the food from the feeders. Look, they all got on a tree and went to one end. So it bended and one squirrel was able to get all of the food for the group. The birds were furious. Hrump, 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 yelled a bonka bird. Those darn squirrels, yelled old man Fuquire. Yum, said the squirrels. Oh my, look how full their tummies are. They ate all the seeds and berries. Now it was old man Fuquire's turn to devise a plan. He went to the general store to get supplies. He bought lasers and clamps. He bought wires and springs. He bought all sorts of tools and built a fortress around his bird feeders. Then he refilled them very carefully. Na 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 snorted the flugel bird. They did not think the squirrels could get this seed. The squirrels stayed up all night working out their strategy. They drank cherry cola and ate salt and vinegar chips to help them stay awake. Finally, they had it. The perfect plan. They put on their tiny helmets and prepared to launch themselves into the air, over the fence, between the lasers, and onto the bird feeders. The first squirrel misfired and hit a tree. The second squirrel went too high and landed in a bucket. The third squirrel sailed clear over the house. The birds laughed and laughed. They each had one last delicious mouthful of seeds and berries from the old man's feeders. Then they flew south for the winter, just as they did every year. After the birds left, old man Fuquire was lonely just as he was every year. He fixed himself some cottage cheese and pepper, his favorite snack, but he was still lonely. When he looked out the window, the squirrels could tell that he wasn't happy. Go away, shouted the old man. I don't like you squirrels. He does look lonely. The squirrels held a meeting deep inside a large tree. It's a squirrel meeting tonight. They decided to give the old man a present to make up for taking his seeds and berries. Now, many people don't know this, but squirrels are not only fuzzy little geniuses, they also collect just about anything they can find on the ground. These squirrels had a vast stockpile of spectacular junk to choose from. But what would Fuquire like? Bottle caps? Popsicle sticks? Postage stamps? Finally, they had it. The perfect gift. The squirrels stacked all of their loose change on old man Fuquire's doorstep. There were dimes and pennies, nickels and quarters. There were even a few tokens from Coco's Arcade. It all added up to $47.36, plus a few rounds of skee-ball. Maybe you squirrels aren't so bad, Fuquire said when he found the coins but I still like the birds better. This gave the squirrels another idea. They raided their junk collection again and got to work. When old man Fuquire woke the next morning, 
he was amazed to see that the birds had returned. But wait, those things weren't birds. They were squirrels in disguise. Great googly moogly, said old man Fuquire. This will make quite a painting. He ran outside and took down the lasers and the wires and the spring-loaded trapeze. He turned all the bird feeders into squirrel feeders. And then he painted till his brush ran out of bristles. The squirrels were overjoyed. They had a party in Old Man Fuquire's house. Those darn squirrels, said Fuquire. And as he shook his old man fist, he smiled. So now he wasn't so lonely after all. All right, one more. And I haven't read Mo Willems for a while. You know, Piggy and Elephant books. This one is There is a Bird on Your Head. Again, by Mo Willems, who also does the pictures. And this is published by Hyperion Books in 2007. All oh, the birds. He says, there is a bird on your head. So the first page shows Gerald and Piggy sitting. Their backs are together. They're taking a little nap. But down comes a bird. and lands on Gerald's head. Piggy, he shouts as he wakes up. Is there something on my head? And Piggy had fallen over, so she gets up and she looks up and she says, yes. There is a bird on your head. Gerald says, there is a bird on my head? She smiles. Ah! He shouts and he runs away. And as he runs, the bird flies off of his head. Is there a bird on my head now? He asks Piggy. And she looks up and says, no. Uh-oh. Now there are two birds on your head, she tells him. Look at his face. Oh. She goes, well. What are two birds doing on my head, Gerald shouts. And Piggy smiles and says, they are in love. Look at him smile, look at her smile, excuse me. They are in love. The birds on my head are in love, Gerald asks. And Piggy shouts, they are lovebirds. Lovebirds. How do you know they are lovebirds? Oh, I can see them bringing little bits of, of twigs and grass. What do you think they're building? A nest? I think that's right. Let's see. We were right, Piggy tells him. They are making a nest. And Gerald said, two birds are making a nest on my head? Why would two birds make a nest on my head, he asks. Piggy just smiles, closes her eyes. <gasps> he realizes, he realizes that, oh, oh, what does a nest mean? Usually eggs. I am afraid to ask, Gerald tells her. Do I have an egg on my head, he asks Piggy, and he leans forward. 
She stands on his trunk and she looks. One, two, three. You have three eggs on your head. Three eggs. I do not want three eggs on my head, Gerald says. Then I have good news, Piggy tells him. The eggs are gone? Gerald asks excitedly. The eggs are hatching, Piggy tells him. Oh, and look at his face. Oh. Hatching, Gerald shouts the big letters, hatching. The eggs on my head are hatching. You can see little, like the little shells are being, the beaks are pecking at the little egg, egg shells. And then, oh, there they are, three little birds. Cheep, 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 they say. And Piggy gets teary-eyed and she tells him they have hatched. Now I have three baby chicks on my head, Gerald asks. Piggy's blowing her nose from crying. And she says, and two birds and a nest. I don't want three baby chicks, two birds and a nest on my head, Gerald tells her. And Piggy scratches her head, she's thinking. Where do you want them, she asks. And Gerald shouts, somewhere else. And he shouts it so loudly that the birds go flying up in the air, the nest goes up, there's a little worm that goes flying up. Piggy gets blown backward by his yelling. Piggy is on the ground and she said, why not ask them to go somewhere else? Ask them, Gerald asks himself and Piggy tells him again, ask them. Do you think that will work? Okay, I will try asking, Gerald says. Excuse me, birds, will you please go somewhere else? No problem, said the daddy bird. And Gerald says, it worked. And look, the two birds push and fly away with the nest. And one of the baby chicks says, bye. Now there are no birds on my head, Gerald says. Thank you, Piggy, thank you very much. And Piggy in a quiet voice says, you are welcome. Oh, no, where are they now? They're on Piggy's head. And that is it, all the nests. Very good listening, friends. Well, I'm so glad you came to story time today. Uh, Miss Jenny will be doing one on Thursday. Um, I hope you're all doing well and please come and see me in the library soon. Bye.